Our top priorities for the community is making sure that St. Paul is a safe place for all of our children through our Community First Public Safety Framework that invests both in police officers and in the young people in our neighborhoods. Our top priority is making sure that we are building the jobs and the housing that we need for our uh, growing population and absolutely eliminating the disparities in our city to make sure that all of our children can access the prosperity that our greater region has to offer. Our goal is to ensure that St. Paul is an amazing place for immigrants and refugees from all over the world. And that of course includes our strong and thriving East African communities who have come here, enriched our schools, enriched our local economy, enriched our cultural institutions, and enriched our city with your presence. We wanna make sure this is a fantastic place to live, not just by ensuring that we're uh, eliminating the disparities, eliminating the discrimination that occurs, making sure that we protect our houses of worship, that we know that we've seen and experienced violence against, but also making sure that St. Paul is a great place to live, work, and play. We established a legal defense fund in the first year of my administration to help uh, protect uh, immigrants and refugees who are being targeted by the Trump administration. We created an office of immigration services to help immigrants and refugees in our community. And just last month, we launched a no interest, a zero interest uh, loan fund to help permanent residents in our community apply for citizenship so we can make sure that you know the extent to which we welcome you and are excited that all of our members of our East African community have made St. Paul their place to live, work, and play. Our goal is to ensure that this is a fantastic place to live. It's a fantastic place to raise children. And in doing those things, we know that we'll make it a fantastic place uh, to operate a business as well. Many of our existing businesses are struggling. Uh, this COVID pandemic and everything that we've endured over the past two years have put us in a challenging spot. One of the first things that we did uh, when we saw businesses close and the pandemic just fundamentally transform the way we do everything in community was say, we need help. We need to get some help out. We put out millions of dollars in help to help small businesses, uh, to help uh, low-income families and just said, here, here's a grant, here's a support to help you kind of do that. We've expanded that program and renewed that program as we've been able to, but obviously we know the need in our community right now is even greater than our capacity to provide that help. The final thing I'll say is this, many of our businesses in our communities of color, many of our small businesses, many of our businesses that are owned by uh, residents and neighbors who just say, hey, I have an idea and I want to invest in this community, we don't have the same amount of lawyers and accountants and compliance staff to help us navigate all the processes at City Hall or the state capitol or wherever we have to go to advance our business. So another thing that's very important for us to do is to continue our work to make it easier to open a business, to make it easier to redevelop your space, to make it easier to reinvest in your home. And in doing that, I think we can address a lot of our disparity challenges all at the same time. Every goal that we have as a community, every goal that we have as a city starts with preparing young people and adults for success in the workforce and success in life. Uh, that means engaging in our public schools. That's why we launched our College Savings Account Initiative to start every baby born in St. Paul with $50 in a college savings account. It's why we've uh, doubled funding for youth jobs and tripled free programming in our rec centers and eliminated late fines in our libraries to make sure all of our families can access those incredible public services. It's why we're working uh, to create our guaranteed income pilot. It's why we're doing all the things that we're doing and investing in affordable housing in ways that the city of St. Paul never has before. So many elements of the things that we challenge, so many of the uh, impacts of poverty in our community are directly connected to how hard it is for so many of our families to just find a job that they can live, uh, that they can work, earn a paycheck, and raise their family with dignity. That's why this work we're doing so, is so important. That's why saying we're gonna invest in us is so important. That's why shifting the narrative from saying, how do we attract businesses from somewhere else and how do we attract workers for some, from somewhere else to how do we ensure that our residents, our families, our parents are all prepared to meet 
uh, the needs of this current economy and the future economy that we know we're walking into. It's the work that we're doing, and I think it's the best way to build our city for the future. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I'm Melvin Carter. I'm running for re-election. Right now, I'm the mayor of St. Paul. I think we've done an, an, an incredible amount of things over the past uh, several years, and I'm looking forward to continuing forward uh, with your support, with your help. I'm asking you to rank Melvin Carter as your first choice on your ballot on November 2nd. Thank you very much. Boom. Thank you. I appreciate you guys.